Good morning, North Carolina Prepper. Um, I'm going to sterilize a lot of my tools for surgical things. Or first aid in my case, not surgery. But it's, the principle is the same. <clears throat> I'm going to use a canner for it over there. I went out and I bought a bunch of the, the strips off um, eBay. The sterile pouches. Uh, I got like 20 or so for... Or 25 for like $2. So, we'll know that it works for sure because this strip here... See that focuses. <clears throat> there we go. We'll change to black or a dark, dark brown. So we'll know that we've achieved sterility. <clears throat> um, the reason we're doing this is because, one, I can. And two, I may not have the stuff in my backpack to sterilize. Let's say I cut myself in the woods or I, I gash my arm on a stick or something or a tree limb or whatever. <clears throat> I want sterile stuff to deal with that. And I'm not going to try to boil, which doesn't get rid of all stuff, doesn't inactivate all bacteria and spores, or bleach, you know. I can sanitize, but why not just have it done now? My general rule is to do things while time and energy is abundant. It's like having your tire blow out of your car. It's going to be a lot easier to fix and cheaper at home if you do it at home, but on the side of the road it's going to cost money. <clears throat> I did screw up. I was going to do a bunch of tools and Put them away, but they won't fit in the pouches I bought. I made a mistake. Um, I used outside diamond instead of inside. So I'm going to just go ahead and do one today. And we're just going to go ahead and sterilize this. The um, curved nose. Um, I can't think of what they're calling Um Got to use distilled water. Because regular tap water, if it has too much uh, particulates in it or it's hard water, It'll cause what looks like rust and corrosion to be impregnated onto your steel or stainless steel. <clears throat> uh, Distilled water is better for this process. Now, basically, we need 121 degrees Celsius, which works out to just say 250. It's really 249 something for 15 minutes. So, we're going to run 15 for 15. 15 pounds of pressure on the canner, and we're going to run <clears throat> 15 minutes. We'll know if this works, because again, we'll have the, we have the sterility checker. Now, you can also wrap stuff up in gauze, and do it that way, and can it with the, the tape, the, the sterility tape. But I'm just going to go ahead and can this. I'm going to can one today, like I said, I, I got the wrong pouches, but it's easy to do. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and let me show you the next process of how I set things up in there, because I don't want it to... Uh, to stick to the bottom or melt to the bottom of the the um, canner. All right, the first thing I got is the uh, a steamer for vegetables. I'm going to put that in the bottom of the canner first. I'm going to put in about an inch of water. Then I'm going to set the plate on top of it. Otherwise, it would be almost in the water. It's not enough water, so I'm going to put it in there like that in the canner and set that in the in the canner. Then I'm going to put the instrument in the bag and I'm going to set it plastic side down. Because sometimes when this is wet, when you pull it out, I've had instruments fall out the back of the bag. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. Basically, you just take it, and you drop your instrument in there. I'm going to have the pointy side, or the upside, towards the plastic. Oh, it's good. And then you, you pull off the tape here, and you want to make sure you cover the, uh, the blue part there. So, let me go ahead and do that off camera a little bit. That. So we're going to set that, that side up like that. I may have actually did that a little far, but I'm going to open it anyway so it doesn't matter. But I did do that a little far. I should have did it right at the line there, but I wasn't looking. So that will be sterile just like that in there. So let me go ahead and put this in there and put the water in there and we'll be good to go. Okay, we've got our half inch or so of water. Our inch or half inch where I put this in there. This is going to keep everything off of the bottom. We're going to go ahead and put the plate in there on top of that. So now I have everything off. We're going to go ahead and set this plastic side down so it doesn't fall off. And I'm going to use the, the 15 pound weight. Let me go ahead and finish that up and I'll show you. Hold on. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put the 15 pound weight on once the steam starts coming out and it's vented. 
Uh, you need steam and not hot air. Uh, steam does in a few minutes what hot air does in like a long time. So You can also do this in three minutes, but you got to hook the uh, pressure up a lot higher. I've also got a multiple um, jiggler that I ordered from the company for five pounds, ten pounds, or you know, fifteen pounds. So let me get this thing steaming and I'll get right back to you. I'm just going to use a big one here, but let me go ahead and get that going. Okay, so it's been a little while and it's steaming now, so I'm going to put this on here, the steady weight. We're going to get to 15 PSI. This should be going up there, let me see. It's a climbing. It's climbing. <clears throat> so, I'll bring it back when it gets up to pressure. Okay, we're at 15 PSI. I'm going to start the timer for 15 minutes. Okay, time to start. There we go. 15 minutes. Um, it's important not to leave. It's important to keep check on things. So there you go. Let's, uh, I'll can come back when this is done. 15 minutes. Look at that. Okay, time is going to go off any second now. It's been at 15 pounds for 15 minutes. <coughs> Let me just get this timer here. Tick tock. Alright. So it's been 15 minutes. At 15 to your life. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. On the electric stove. Yeah. On the electric stove. It took, um, a number, setting number four held it just right. I said electric cell. A lot of people don't like to count these. Um, 15 pounds is, you know, these things can be kind of scary because you have a lot of pressure there. So, I'm going to let it cool down naturally. And, uh, you know, we'll be back after it cools down. Then we'll open it and pull it out. I'll wait till the uh, safety lock goes down there. So, let me let that all cool down and lose this pressure and all that good stuff. See, okay, we'll drop it now, but definitely ain't going to open it before it uh, loses this pressure. Um, I ain't even going to try. I'm not going to try to flash release the pressure by pulling the valve off and all that good stuff. I don't see any need to that. I'm just going to let it do its thing. And, uh, there you go. So I'll be back just before I open this one. It's safe. Okay. Okay. Pressure's down. You can take this off now. That is really still hot. I guess it's okay to open though. Fence down. We're all good. So we're going to open this and like every other pressure can on the planet, we're going to open it away from our face. Because you know hot steam and such. You know what, that's a little too hot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait, it's too hot to touch right now. So I'm gonna give it a little more time. I'll be back. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. I have some cool towels here. There we go. And, that was really hot. So, we're going to let this cool off for a bit, because I'm not sticking my hand in there with no the heat, so I'll be back when it cools down. I do want to go ahead and show you the, uh, the, uh, mark on there. See how it's all dark right now? This is what it looks like normally. There it is. Bluish. And that is... Wherever it is, there it is. Blackish. So, brownish. There we go. Let's try and focus on that. Yeah, we'll have to let it dry out and cool out a little bit. Let me, uh, let me see if we can pull this out. Let me grab that. Hold 
There we go. It is really, really hot. And I mean hot, hot, hot. <clears throat> so there's the mark. Get macro. There we go. See how that's shown? We know for sure it's still in there. It looks bad, but still wet. Probably should have got extra minerals out of here, but still. There we go. There's a mark. And when that gets cool enough to pick up and move, I will. I'll show you the other part. Okay, so it's all done now. It's cool to touch. It's crickety. So there's, there it is. I don't know why there's another black dot on there, but it's all sterile. It's because I'm getting macro mode. So, when you look at it here, it's all crickety. There's no, um, no rust or anything on there. Or nothing that appears to be rust. So there you go. Now, like I said, I sealed this wrong. If you look at it there, you can see that it's open. I didn't seal it right. But let's go ahead and open it. And let's take a look. Let me, uh, let me set the camera down. I can't do both things. Okay. So then you write your information down here or whatever, but these are all sterile. You open it up here. It breaks all these layer of seals on everything. And then you wouldn't touch this with your human hands, but I'm gonna. Because here it is. Might have been some oil. I didn't really clean these before I put them in. But they're all good now. Now they're all bad. But there you go. That's how you sterilize at home. You should really clean your instruments before you do this. Soap and water, dry them, whatever. Um, I don't know what would happen if you use cheap Pakistani type uh, in, in, instruments. I don't know if they'll be sterile for long or if they'll rust. Like I said, these are stainless steel. Well, actually, these are cheap ones, but the other ones over there are stainless steel. These are these are my good you know good pair of forceps here that'll have to be cleaned and sealed up. But like I said, I bought the wrong pouches, <coughs> so. There you go. That's how to sterilize at home. <clears throat> you can sterilize anything. Like I said, you can wrap gauze and stuff up and wrap it up in like another set of gauze or another set of like a, the surgical towels and put the sterile tape over there for, and you'll know if it's sterilized through the sterile indicators. <clears throat> you should have your, your, uh, your pressure canner checked to make sure the temperature gauge is working right. The county extension for your county will pretty much do that for free. Uh, I didn't do it because I had the jiggler on there, and I know mine's accurate, or was last time I had it checked, but, um, like I said, we have the, uh, sterile mark there, so we know that it was sterile. There's no question in our mind that it's sterile, so, there you go. That's, uh, pretty much how you sterilize stuff at home. Uh, you can sterilize anything you want. Uh, I keep my medical kit sterilized. I get the big pack, the really big pack, and I'll put a full set in there. For treating whatever. Now I may not have the skill set to treat certain kinds of wounds, like penetrating wound or suture sets or whatever. I mean, but I can make the kit and I can sterilize it and put in like a little tray or something and sterilize it. I, I've actually used things from the Chinese food places and sterilized it, and, and made my my what I call the trauma kit. And I throw it in my pack, and then if someone's a surgeon. You know, they have the tools to deal with whatever injury. If you if you go out and you get a real bad laceration, I could I could stitch that up, but it would look horrible and I'd probably get scarred. But I wouldn't bleed out. But if there's someone there who knew what they were doing and had the skill set, let me stress that, if they had the skill set, they can do it right. But I keep things sterile because this will set in my pack for years and years and years and remain sterile. Uh, you know, if you if you seal that right up there, you know, it will be sealed. But there you go, North Carolina Prepper. There's an easy way to sterilize your own stuff at home or sterilize your own equipment. Um, whatever you need to sterilize, you can do it. Okay, please rate, subscribe, have a great day. Thank you.